whole group of bonobos went completely crazy. A lot of vocalizations, a lot of screaming. Whereupon Sashimi ran up a tree and he had a very badly bitten finger. Subsequently, about 10, 15 minutes later, Sashimi returned to the center of the group and then lay upside down on a log, feeling very sorry for himself. Other individuals in the group, particularly young ones, noticed that he was distressed or hurt or upset, whatever you want to call it, and came to investigate. And they made these very, very subtle, quiet vocalizations. Um, who knows what they were feeling, but it looked extremely compassionate to me. Um, and they were showing, it seemed to me to be showing an enormous amount of sympathy to Sashimi's plight. And it, it was extraordinarily human. We can attribute human emotions to animals. I mean, we're looking at animals in a different way now, I think. And these long-term studies, um, the primate, the great ape studies, the elephant studies, um, studies of other animals, uh, a different picture is emerging. Juego de niños. El cerebro de todos los mamíferos trabaja con un sofisticado sistema de recompensa y castigo que dispara la emoción de miedo o ansiedad en una circunstancia peligrosa u ofrece placer como un premio emocional en el comportamiento sano. El juego permite a los jóvenes animales desarrollar habilidades de supervivencia como la capacidad crítica de conocer las intenciones de otro animal. Animals play partially because they have an experience of joy. El neurocientífico Jack Fang Sepp ha pasado 20 años tratando de encontrar los orígenes de la más positiva de las emociones, la alegría. Sorprendentemente ha encontrado algunas respuestas en compañía de ratas, ratas juguetonas. As we have listened to animals playing, we have heard what appeared to be the sounds of laughter. And uh, we studied these for a couple of years without quite understanding that this might be laughter. And then one day we decided to tickle some animals. And we realized that we had to look at the sounds at a very different register than we can hear. So we uh, obtained these transducers that are called bat detectors that can bring very high frequencies down to our auditory range. And when we did this and we listened in, we could tickle animals and generate a lot of vocal activity that appeared to be laughter. These animals would begin to enjoy our company and they would start to play with our hands and wherever we would put our hands, they would follow it. And when we tested these animals to ask whether they were enjoying this kind of activity, the unambiguous answer was yes. One way was to have a long runway, and we put the animal on one end, and on the other hand, we put our hand. And we just see whether the animal likes to run to our hand when we tickle them. And animals run much faster when we tickle them than when we just pet them. Tickling seems to activate something special inside their brains. El juego fortalece conexiones entre las neuronas y el cerebro que pueden realmente hacer que un animal sea un adulto más inteligente, más apto y más exitoso. There's a powerful relationship between play and opiates in our brains. In general, they're called neurotrophins, but let's just call them brain fertilizers. Without these molecules, 
our brains cannot connect up properly. We know that some of these molecules are turned on by touch. And what happens in play? Lots and lots of touch. El profesor Mark Beckhoff enseña comportamiento animal en la Universidad de Colorado. Su trabajo requiere que pase muchas horas observando jugar a los perros. People are interested in the emotional content of play, and to me it is one of joy and pleasure. This cloud of play just sort of hangs over these animals, and they look like they're smiling. They're enjoying themselves. A lot of people often ask me why dogs smile. And I think that one reason is because they're very relaxed and their jaw just drops and they're just very, very happy and they have what we call a play face. But another reason that smiling may really occur is because it serves some communication value. Another animal might see my face and just go, well, he's smiling. I don't know what they call it, but he's smiling and he must be happy and he must be looking for a play partner. El juego es algo más que diversión. Permite que los animales aprendan de manera segura destrezas vitales sin tener que pagar por sus errores. Es el ensayo para los inevitables peligros de la vida. The real world of any species is very complex and very unpredictable. And so they need to be able to deal with rapidly changing situations. The form of play that's best for survival for a species depends a lot on how the species lives. So for example, ungulates such as deer, elk, and moose might show mostly anti-predatory behavior. So that might involve high amplitude or jumping movements to avoid being preyed on or eaten. In carnivores, often you see what's called predatory play, in which they use behavior patterns that they use in predation or trying to get food in their play. Some animals show a lot of solitary or object play. These would be animals who tend to live alone and don't have the luxury, if you will, of having playmates. Animals look happy when they play. They seek it out relentlessly. And if they can't get another animal to play, they often chase their tails or go play with an object. If they don't enjoy it, why do they seek it out? Well, it's because play is important and it makes them feel good. Animals tend to do things that they like to do, no different than human beings. 